Uh, hello and welcome to Exceed Learning. In this video, we're going to show you how you can perform a dynamic coalesce using Power Query. We have two tables in our example. The table to the left is the source table and the table to the right has this additional coalesce column in which we, for each row of the table, return the last populated field. We also ignore, in case there are no values in the columns Jan to June, we ignore the columns name and type and return null value. This also works in case we, we would have an additional column to the right of the selected columns we want to do coalesce upon. Now let's go to our starting file and let's show you the solution. First, we need to add this data to Power Query. And now we will do an add column, custom column. We'll call this column coalesce. And we will add an underscore symbol as its formula. The underscore symbol represents an unnamed variable, which actually holds the record of the current row of the table. So each of these records hold the values of that current row. What we could do now, we could uh, transform this record dot to list to receive a list of all the values starting from the left column and to the right. What now we can do, we can remove nulls record dot remove uh, it's not record, this is list dot remove nulls. And this will remove all null values from our lists. And then we can simply use list last, list dot last to extract the last non null value from each list. We immediately spot the problem. The problem is in the second row where because there were no uh, values in the gen until June columns, we returned a type column value, which is not something that we wish to achieve. We want to achieve if there are no values in the gen until June uh, in gen until June columns, we want to re return an empty value, not an A. So how can we achieve a dynamic selection of only distinct number of columns or only uh, the needed number of columns uh, to do coalesce upon, we will show with record.selectFields function. So we will start again, add a custom column, call it coalesce, and we will add an underscore symbol to receive the record for each row. And now what we want to achieve is the following. record dot select fields is a function that will for each record allow us to define a field a list of values that are the names of the columns or the names of the record fields the record field is actually the name of the column in, when iterating upon the table so we can add in this curly brackets, which is a syntax for list, we can add all the names of our columns that we wish to do uh, columns upon. March, April, May, oops, sorry, May, and June. Did I be wrong? Yeah, we need to close the brackets. Okay, this one. So now this record holds, as we can see, only columns from Jan to June. And now what we can do, we can do all those steps that we previously created upon the whole record. We can now create upon only, uh, the, upon the record containing only select fields. So we can now do uh, record to list. And we can also create a record to list and then 
we could do list dot remove nulls and we can also put list dot last before those functions and we will need to close these brackets uh, additional one yeah and this will give us the correct corresponding value but as we, as we can observe this is not dynamic does this list of names is a static list but what we can do we can put any kind of a list that we previously created instead of these hard-coded values what we can do we can insert a new source uh, step after the source one and we could do let's say table dot column names column names over the source step this will give us a list of column names and then we could do list dot uh, remove remove items and we could remove items named name oh we have to edit them in a list name and type these are these two items and we can simply remove them from our list and now what we can do we can let's rename this list into um, call s uh, columns you could also improve you could also instead of this simple syntax you could you could invoke uh, any kind of advanced filtering option to really address only the columns that you wish to include in coalesce and afterwards we can we can return to our uh, last step instead of addressing the coalesce columns step we will address the source step and instead of these hard-coded names of the columns or names of the record fields which are actually the names of the columns we could simply invoke or we can simply uh, address the coalesce columns and as you can see, we receive uh, no errors and we receive a new call as column containing all the values except the ones coming from columns name and type. We can now close this and load it into a uh, table. Let's load it next to this one. And if we were to add a new column called, yeah, this one, this feature won't work with this part because we have, or let's let's do it like this if we move this column to the right and we refresh the call s will still ignore this column and do only call s upon gen until june columns and also if we have a row with no values it will also ignore any other column that is not a part of the call s ones we used record.selectFields, which is a cool function, which is a really important function to address uh, a specific column names or a spe specific record fields from a record. And also, if you do this technique upon a large amount of data, uh, be sure to push the list into a buffer. So always do list.buffer over the names of the columns. Uh, this could improve your performance, not but as much as I've, I've hoped, hoped for, but it will improve your performance when dealing with large amount months of data. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please post them in the comment section below. If you like the video, please hit like subscribe button and we will see you in the next, uh, I would say advanced M video. Bye.